You know, sometime when we down here filming, I get a hankering, man. I just love a tater chip, something salty to get me by. So let me get me some out of the pickup. Hang on with me. Oh my gosh, big what have you? Just as usual, the sack is empty, but don't you worry, folks. We got a homemade tater chip with some special seasonings to put them up our deep fried stick around. I'll keep the beagle out of them till you get here. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by the river on a glorious day it is. And what? Happy New Year! We had a big party down here. Y'all didn't get the invitation? Y'all should have been watching, I guess. But before we go any further, I want to give a special shout out to the Marine Recruits of Echo Company 2012. Woo, we are so proud of y'all. We tip our hat to you. Stay safe. We want y'all to be safe. But hey, y'all ever had that hankering for some good old tater chips? And every time you go to the bag, they either stale, they all got crumbs in them. But folks, this is the easiest recipe in the world. And they are so good, so tasty. Before we go any further in this, remember, Anything that we use in this video and anything that I am wearing, such as this Ariat shirt and the boots, because I get a lot of questions from you folks asking, hey, where you get your hat, where you get your boots, where you get your shirt? Channel have you a little link down there to where you can find the same stuff I'm wearing. One thing you need to remember is we got to start with the right kind of potato. What kind is it? Anybody know out there? Audience is real thin today, Shan. See them out there? I mean, oh. They're still all hung over from the New Year's Eve party. And that is a russet. I think they hold up better than anything else in the world. And they are a great tater. This is a specimen of a russet potato. And ain't he pretty? He has sacrificed it all to be here today. Left his family. He kept an eye out for you. Ain't that a good one? I've been waiting to use that for a long time. And folks, you can do this with a knife. But I don't recommend it because you won't get uniformity when you try to slice them thin all the time so get yourself a mandolin play you a little song on it but don't pick it i'm gonna tell you you see that little blade in there because i want to pop this out see that little rascal it will cut your fingers so quick you won't know what happened there'll be blood all in the water you'll be thinking he's watching me on an episode of chop grill masters when i cut my finger but make sure you use the one that says thin sliced now, I have seen people do it on just regular graters and cut across or a cheese slicer. But, folks, you're going to get more uniformity out of it if you just go ahead and use this mandolin. Now, get you a bowl of some type that will hold some cold water. Tap water is fine to start out with because we cut the end off that tater. Just put it right there and just take it and slice. Now, as you run it down through there and the law of gravity takes place, as Isaac Newton might say, Everything's going to get thinner and closer to cutting your finger off. They make this little fancy handy dandy tool here that when you get to the end, you can stab your tater on there and you ain't going to cut all your fingers off. You want to make sure that they're in water and then let's put ice on top of it. Now, I like to let them soak and I've done a lot of research on this and me and Beagle eat a lot of different chips from a lot of different ways that people were making them. Some were just soaking them just a little while. Some were soaking them overnight. Y'all remember that hash brown video that we did? Shad will have you a link up there if you hadn't already seen it. It is important to get the starch out. We got to rinse these taters. We got to let them soak. And that's what's taking place first. You want to make sure that everybody is separated to where we can get them all well soaked and cleaned and rinsed. Give them a good stirring. We're going to let them soak 30 minutes in an ice bath. But due to the magic of TV and Shan's fancy camera, we've already got some done. Yay! I'm giving this a good stir in here. So we're going to take a few of these at a time. I would say a handful. Try to shake that water off of them. Let me put it over here so y'all can see better. And then just drop them in here. Again, you have to separate them in this clean water. And you can see how it's sort of changed see the vein in the potato and how it sort of begin to curl a little by soaking in that ice water but looking from that pot to that pot there is a big difference in the color of the water of them potatoes the cleaner the water the better it stays the crisper them potato chips is going to be is that a word crisper potato chips yeah tater chips and folks when i was doing research on this a lot of people would just dry this one right here just dry him really good let him come to a really good drying 
and then throw him in some hot oil and fry him. And he would get oh so crispy around the outside edge, but as he said, the middle was soggy. So the cowboy gonna let you in on a cowboy trick that is gonna make them stay crispy all the way through. As you're rinsing this, if this water, and you can see that, that has got a little color to it. So guess what? I'm gonna pour this out and get just a tad more and we're gonna rinse them one more time because I want that water to stay good and clear. Well, this is my second rinsing, and as you can tell, that there water looks pretty clean. It does, so I'm going to call that a done deal. Now, if it ain't, don't be afraid to rinse them again. You ain't going to hurt them. We've got us about four to four and a half cups of water in this little pot, and we're going to bring it to a low simmer. Then we're going to put us in about a tablespoon of white vinegar. That is going to help get that crispness, too. Even if you're just frying potatoes at home and you want to keep them crisp, either use you just a little bit of vinegar in the water that you got them soaking in or some lemon juice. It'll help them things crisp up even more. Pot is boiling. The little bit of vinegar is in there and we reached that just starting to a simmer deal. So I'm going to go ahead and drain this. So get you about eight or ten at a time. And I don't want you to just throw them in there. I want you to lay them in there so they don't be sticking together. This is what we call blanching some taters. And as these begin to boil, we want to go about three to four minutes here. You can see how they begin to where you can nearly see through them already. I do like to give them a little stirring, but see how it's beginning to curl a little more than what is happening here. And then when they come out of here, which is time right now, you need to put them on a beagle towel. Oh, we got a beagle towel? Oh my gosh. So make sure you get them all out. We'll put the next batch in. Once you get that first bunch done as that other one's sitting over there blanching a little, make sure that you get them things dried and let's put them on another towel. Because folks, the drying out is a very important step because you can't be mixing cold, wet something with hot grease. That stuff will jump up and hit you in the face. Hey, if you ain't got one of the thermometers, is that how you say that, Shin? Thermometers? You better get you one because this is not your typical 350 degree frying. This is 375 and you want to keep that oil at that. And as you put taters in there, this may go to cooling off. So make sure you check your heat every once in a while. And don't just jump all of them in there at one time. Put them in there single file in the pool. Probably going to take three to four minutes along in there. Check your temp every once in a while. Remember, we want to run about 375. We're using peanut oil today. You want a good high temp fry oil that you're using. So make sure that you get to stay up there in the right range. And we got about three to three and a half inches deep in this Finex Dutch oven. You can do this in a flat cast iron skillet at home if you want to, but you just can't fry very many at a time. I can recommend a piece of cast iron like this Dutch oven or a deep fryer if you're going to do it makes it quicker and simpler. Well, we've been on about three or four minutes and one way you can check these, if you want to make sure, bring them up there, don't burn your fingers. Hear that? That is crust. So let's get them out of there, put them on a paper towel, wire rack, something like that. Let that excess grease drip off of them. It is very important when they come out of that oil to get some seasoning. Some of y'all already know what we're going to put on them, don't you? Yep, some Red River Ranch Mesquite. But don't quit me now because we're going to have you some more seasoning options here a little bit later that we've concocted. So give them a good sprinkling of seasoning. I like to turn them over. Give them some more. We're letting that oil heat back up because every time you fry a batch, that oil is going to try to drop down in temperature. So make sure you check it every time before you start back.
Tater Chips is all about the flavors that have blended well with all the things that they put on them. Hey, what have we got here? Just a regular old ranch packet with a little more onion salt on there. What is this one? Ooh, I can't remember, Shan. It's chili. That's the chili powder. <laughs> that is a chili powder with a little smoked paprika and everything else. Shan's favorite, we can't forget here. Just some regular little dry deal mm -hmm. and some Himalayan pink salt. And what do we got here? Onion powder and a little garlic. Mm, it is so good. Now, folks, if you need to be having all these recipes for these different blends of seasoning, they'd be listed down there below in the little description where it says click for printable recipe. But some of you are saying, hey, I'll be watching it on smart TV. My TV's not that smart. I can't do that. <laughs> but if you can't see it on there, just get on your little computer, type in www.kentrawlins.com slash the blog. It'll take you over. All the recipes are there. I want to hear a crunch. I'm going to start with my favorite, which is the mesquite seasoning. Oh, oh yes. my gosh. And I forgot to tell you, leave that peeling on there. All them nutrients is in there, and it keeps that tater in better shape. Oh. Help showed up. When you break out the food, the pups show up. Which kind would y'all like? The mesquite? Doker. Doker. Oh, that's a good crunch. It'll take Duke a week to eat his. Remember, it is so important that you follow all them steps as you go along. Cut them thin, put them in ice water, let them soak about 30 minutes, and then get them out of there, but you gotta rinse them well till that water is really clear. Get your thermometer, cause you're gonna need it. Check your temperature in between batches to make sure that that oil is good and mm, hot all the time. Try the dill one, cause I know you're not a big fan of dill. This here is Shan's favorite. I should give it to her so she could hear the crunch, but she's always saying, venture out, Kent. Have new flavors in your life. Broaden <laughs> Dill, your Dill palate. Dill is not that crazy. I think it deserves a dance. We're gonna do the tater chip stomp. <laughs> Namaste. Well, let her rip tater chip. That is a done deal, and whoo, they are good. They are, and we want to thank all of y'all. New viewers, ones that have been with us a long time, our first episode of 2020, and folks, it is going to be a grand year, because remember what happens this year, March 17th, brand new cookbook comes out. Faith, family, and the feast it is what it's about. We tip our hat to all our servicemen and women and veterans and all the people who keep our community safe, whether it be in our hometown or abroad, we tip our hat to you, and God bless you, each and every one. But folks, hey, it's a great day, it is. I'm so glad y'all took time out of your busy day, me and Shan are, that you could stop by and watch our videos. God bless you, each and every one. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you down the Letter Rip Tater Chip Trail. And I always tell them that we slice them in water, okay? okay. Are you in the potato water? Hey, Duggar, I was going to use that water. <laughs> Guess not today. Okay.